It was barely 11 months ago in Doha when my delegation made an appeal, an appeal to the world to open our eyes to the stark realities that we face. As then, we confronted a catastrophic storm that resulted in the costliest disaster in Philippine history. Less than a year hence, we cannot imagine that a disaster much bigger would come. With an apparent cruel twist of fate, my country is being tested by this hailstorm called Super Typhoon Haiyan. It was so strong that if there was a Category 6, it would have fallen squarely in that box. Haiyan was estimated to have attained sustained winds of 315 kilometers per hour. That's equivalent to 195 miles per hour and gusts up to 378 kilometers per hour, making it the strongest typhoon in modern recorded history. And despite the massive efforts that my country had exerted in preparing for the onset of this storm, it was just a force too powerful, and even as a nation familiar with storms, Haiyan was nothing we have ever experienced before. Mr. President, the picture in the aftermath is ever slowly coming into clearer focus. The devastation is colossal. What my country is going through as a result of this extreme climate event is madness. The climate crisis is madness. Mr. President, we can stop this madness right here in Warsaw. It is the 19th COP, but we might as well stop counting because my country refuses to accept that a COP30 or a COP40 will be needed to solve climate change. And because it seems that despite the significant gains we have had since the UNFCCC was born, 20 years hence, we continue to fall short in fulfilling the ultimate objective of the Convention. Now we find ourselves in a situation where we have to ask ourselves, can we ever attain the ultimate objective of the Convention, which is to prevent dangerous anthropogenic interference with the climate system? By failing to meet the objective of the Convention, me, we may have ratified our own doom. We find ourselves at a critical juncture, and the situation is that even the most ambitious emissions reductions by developed countries who should have been taking the lead in the last two decades will not be enough to avert the climate crisis. It is now too late, too late to talk about the world being able to rely on Annex I countries to solve the climate crisis. We have entered a new era that demands global solidarity in order to fight climate change and ensure that the pursuit of sustainable human development remains at the core of the global community's efforts. This is why the means of implementation for developing countries becomes ever so crucial. We cannot sit and stay helpless staring at this international climate stalemate. It is now time to raise ambition and take action. We need an emergency climate pathway. Mr. President, I speak for my delegation. But I, I speak, speak for the countless people who will no longer be able to speak for themselves after perishing from the storm. I speak also for those who have been orphaned by the storm. I speak for those of the people now raising its time to save survivors and alleviate the suffering of the people affected. We can take drastic action now to ensure that we prevent a future where super typhoons become a way of life. Because we refuse, as a nation, to accept a future where super typhoons like Haiyan become a way of life. We refuse to accept that running away from storms, evacuating our families, suffering the devastation and misery, counting our dead become a way of life. We simply refuse to. We believe in sustainable development. And because we believe that solving climate change is our moral duty. This moral duty is applicable to all parties. This process under the UNFCCC has been called many, many names. It has been called a farce. It has been called an annual carbon-intensive gathering of useless frequent flyers. It has been called many names, and this hurts. But we can prove them wrong. The UNFCCC can also be called the project to save the planet. It has also been called saving tomorrow today, a couple of years ago. And today we say, I care. We can fix this. We can stop this madness. Right now, right here, in the middle of this football field, and stop moving the goalposts. Mr. President, Your Excellency, Honorable Minister, my delegation calls on you most respectfully 
to lead us and let Poland and Warsaw be remembered forever as the place where we truly cared to stop this madness. If this is our imperative here in Warsaw, you can rely on my delegation. Now, can humanity rise to this occasion? Mr. President, I still believe we can.